Norway Chess round four, the world champion against the world number two, Carson versus uh, Fabiano Caruana, a heavyweight clash in the fourth round of the Norway Chess, and uh, Magnus Carson actually did manage to beat Fabiano Caruana in the classical chess for the first time in a couple of years. That's, uh, that's always a cool encounter, and we'll see how Magnus managed to to ground down his uh, his American opponent in, in this game. So we start off with a Nimzo Indian opening. The players, of course, very uh, flexible opening repertoires. They can play pretty much uh, anything. Uh, Fabiano chose the Nimzo in this uh, game. And Magnus responds in kind with uh, Queen C2. Now castles, A3. This is also a very normal move. You could go uh, knight f3, for example. You could also go e3. Lots of opportunities here for white to, to play it safe or um, to play more theoretical, like Magnus does in this game. a3 takes is the only move, of course. Queen takes, which is the whole point beyond the queen c2 variation. You want to uh, avoid the double pawns. And now d5. Black had uh, options here as well. d5 is the, uh, well, I guess the theoretically uh, recommended move for, for black, supposed to be pretty safe. You could also go for something like b6, which is more, uh, I guess, flexible, a bit more complex, keeping more pieces on the board, while d5 attempts to fight for the center immediately. Often uh, this is the strategy, followed up by b6 and c5. Bishop g5, Karana plays the standard uh, maneuver, takes, takes, and b6. Rook d1 from Magnus, lots of options here as well. I guess this is the, the normal move, trying to, to stop c5 for now. Bishop a6, queen a4, keeping the bishop alive. Queen d7, breaking the pin. Uh, that's also a very nice move, and we don't, we don't take on d7 immediately. That would only help black with his coordination and his development, and also to prepare c5. So Magnus chose queen c2 instead, forcing queen c6. But now he decides to take because the knight is slightly misplaced on c6 and also we get to deliver b bishop takes f6 forcing g of 6 and uh, making a, a well making a small concession in uh, in black's pawn structure on the king's side so this is uh, not the most flexible pawn structure for black and a small win for for white now I think knight f3 has been played before a couple of times, but uh, e3 chosen by Magnus is uh, is just as fine. Uh, it's probably going to transpose anyway. Bishop takes f1, and even though you you lost uh, the right to castle here with uh, with white, moving your king, uh, this is practically an end game. Uh, so you you just want the king on e2 anyway to be uh, perfectly centralized and also uh, ready to con contribute in in the end game. So uh, tucking the king away on h1, g1 is, is not really logical here. Anyway, knight a5. This is, of course, black's um, only tempting pawn break in the position. Uh, doing something like e5 uh, would only be counterproductive. e5, d5, for example. And you see there are lots of squares here to um, to aim for with, with the white knight. Um, Maybe even something like g4 could be played to, to stabilize the control over f5. Uh, but anyway, this, this pawn structure is, is no good for, for black. And that's why Karana attempts to, to play c5. Knight c4, trying to, uh, to win a pawn. Magnus doesn't allow this, of course. And remember, knight f3 serves also an important function here. Stopping the um, terrible fork on d2. C5 from uh, Fabi, king e2, protecting his uh, pawn, attacking the knight and chasing the knight away. And here we have the, the point of white's setup. Okay, a black managed to, to break with c5, but uh, that's, uh, that's okay uh, for, for Magnus because the black is left with an isolated pawn on c5, also an isolated pawn on a7, and also this doubled pawn and an isolated pawn on h6. So positionally, uh, white is doing very well here. There's uh, small advantages all over the board, but there's not a lot of pieces left. And if black manages to get something going in the, in the B file, then the initiative and the counterplay might offset uh, black's wrecked pawn structure here. So that's black's strategy and uh, white just wants to improve his coordination and pressure against, uh, put pressure on the, the black 
weaknesses in the position. So, uh, so rook c2 is a good start for Magnus, king f8. Knight d2 covering important squares. Also, maybe even this is an op opportunity at some later stage. c4 stopping knight b3. Doubling of the rooks, rook a b8 starting to, to play in the b file. King f3. C3 from from Fabi, which um, which is curious but also understandable because he feels the pressure is is mounting on the C pawn. He wants to to lose it on in, on his own terms, uh, so to speak. Uh, he had an alternative here. He could play something like Rook C5, maybe even give a, give a check or or play Rook B5 at uh, at the next move. Uh, maybe he feared the pretty cool move B4. Of course, not allowing en passant because the rook would be hanging on c5, so you would need to retreat with, with black, but then suddenly knight b3 again, and, and something like this could be a, a nuisance for, for black. But but still, this is by by no means over. I mean, the, the black pawn is still alive, and the king is coming to, to e7. Maybe f5 is, is also possible to, to play. Um, so, so black is uh, well and truly alive here, but there's not a lot of play for, for black. So if white is... Um, is precise, uh, starts with something like g4, which is quite typical in these positions, just trying to stop any pawn advances for, for black. And this could get quite uh, cramped for uh, for Fabi. Um, so I guess this is um, Fabi's concern in the position. White is slightly better, it's not over by, by any means, but uh, Magnus has all the time in the world to improve his position. And if there's one player, uh, you don't want to allow uh, that kind of, of, of stuff against it's, it's definitely Magnus. So he will he will grind you down in this position. So c3, a pawn sack from, from Fabi, b takes, rook c5, c4, f5. This is black's uh, point. I mean, uh, trying to, to play a sort of uh, blockading game here while also getting in f5, stopping any advances here. Um, so okay, Magnus proceeds with king e2, king e7, Getting the king uh, to the center, of course, helping protect c4. And now it's uh, it's only a matter of time before black had to retreat because knight b3 was coming anyway, c5, knight e8. And now, of course, threatening all, all sorts of, uh, of of play here with the, with the knight. The rook needs to move away, but but still, this is looking like uh, a, a small catastrophe for, for black, the, the pawn. He sacrificed has become uh, pretty strong uh, on, on c5 could also advance further here so it's uh, definitely trouble uh, for for black just keeping uh, keeping all pawns alive here Magnus uh, staying precise and now suddenly rook b3 coming into b7 is uh, bothersome for for Fabi needs to cover this rook c7 and now rook c4 maybe even this is an, an option um, Putting pressure on c5, of course, knight d3, and and now Fabi sees there's no other option than to 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 become a bit desperate actually with with e5, trying to put some more pressure on c5. And he can't really live with this this strong pawn. It could advance at the next move, and uh, maybe even uh, White could kick the knight away from from d5. And this uh, pass pawn is so strong that Fabi decides to damage his own uh, pawn structure even further, just to exchange this one off. This is what happens. Rook b7 check, king e6, and now a knight f7. Two pawns up for Magnus, and, and still the uh, the pawn structure is advantageous for, for white, and black has no specific play against the, the white king. So this is um, this is really lost for, for black. Magnus, of course, finishes in, uh, in style. His technique is second to, to none in history, so... Let's just see how he finished the game off. Getting coordinated, of course, protecting the, the pawn on a3, h5, king d2, bringing the king closer, and the king needs to contribute in the end game. We all know this. h4, check, king c4, king c2. Perfect coordination from Magnus. Really, really picturesque. This rook d6, and now. Knight f4, just forcing forcing another trade, and uh, and uh, that's really not really something Fabi could uh, uh, could save this this end game. Uh, two pawns down, and uh, these pawns are also quite weak. 
That's not good against the world champion, so Fabi decides to throw in the towel. He resigned. Magnus took a, in, uh, an important win on 51 moves against his uh, biggest rival in the tournament. And in the next game, we'll see how Aga Antari managed to, uh, to beat Jan Kirstoff Duda in the tiebreak.